Syrian Arab Army has killed and wounded a large number of terrorists in Al Quz and in Nisr Mountains, as well as, as, well as in Al Nabi Mul and Al Kulu crossing in Latakia northern countryside. Al Halaki says Syria has adopted itself to international resolutions in order to reach a peaceful solution to the crisis, and the government has allocated 50 billion Syrian pounds to the Reconstruction Committee this year. And the Lebanese army starts to implement a security plan endorsed by the government in Tripoli. This is News in English from Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. Several terrorists have been killed or wounded when their gatherings have been attacked by the Syrian Arab Army in Al Quz and Al Nisr Mountains in Al Furulukh, crossing in Latakia countryside. The weapons of the terrorists and equipment have been also destroyed, including their heavy machine gun provided vehicles. The Syrian Arab Army and National Defense Units have maintained control over Point 45 in Latakia northern countryside. They continue to pursue the remnants of the terrorists in that area. Taking control of this hill, the army has thus tightened its grip on the area surrounding it and on the armed terrorist groups there who had infiltrated from it into Syrian territories through the Turkish borders. Moving to Yabrud in Damascus countryside, where the inhabitants continue to return to their homes and properties after the army had expelled the terrorists and eliminated them in that district as well as in Ras al Marda and Thita. A large number of families from Damascus, Homs and al Nabk, as well as other neighboring towns and villages have started to take the road on their way back to Yabrud without fears over their fate and the fate of their children after it has been cleared of terrorists thanks to the sacrifices of our Syrian Arab Army. This would pave the way for a rapid rehabilitation of the infrastructure and water, electricity and telephone networks. Maintenance to be carried out by the city's council. In Palmyra, the authorities retrieved 15 archaeological pieces that had been stolen by the armed terrorist groups in order to be smuggled outside Syria. Five citizens have been killed and 26 others injured, some of them seriously, during attacks with mortar shells carried out by terrorists in Nile Street and Al Mogambo in Aleppo City. In Damascus, a female worker has been killed and three others were injured as terrorists fired a mortar shell on a trailer's workshop in a Sadat area of Al Qassa, inflicting heavy material damage on the place. Another shell was fired by the terrorists on the secondary school of Jodat al-Hashimi, injuring two students and inflicting material damage on the school's building. Meanwhile, three mortars were fired by the terrorists on Al-Abbasin Square, its surroundings, and Aleppo Street in the area nearby, damaging a number of cars and shops. In Homs, three citizens were injured in attacks with rockets and mortar shells fired by terrorists on the town of Jabba Jarrah in Homs countryside. Terrorists also targeted the town of Abu Alaya with a rocket inflicting material damage on the telephone building. Within the framework of the humanitarian response plan signed between the Foreign and Expatriates Ministry in the Syrian Arab Republic and the United Nations Center in Syria, and in, pre in the presence of Prime Minister Dr. Wael Halaki, the Ministry of Local Administration, and the United Nations Human Settlement Program, UN Habitat, today signed a memo of understanding on enhancing the emergency response to cities and assessing the effects of the crisis on them. The memo was signed on the Syrian side by Deputy Prime Minister for Services, Minister of Local Administration, Engineer Omar Ghalawanji, and on the United Nations Program side by Director of the Programs Department at the UN Programs Main Center, Mr. Elion Badian.
Addressing the opening meeting of the workshop on enhancing the emergency response of Syrian cities and assessing the impacts of the crisis on them, Dr. Halqi said Syria has positively dealt with all international Arab and local initiatives related to the Syrian people and adapted itself to all international decisions that would lead to a peaceful solution to the crisis in Syria. Out of its constant commitment to all international legitimacy resolutions, Dr. Halqi referred to the government's measures to prepare first aid plans in the short and long run to curb with emergency cases. He pointed out that a sum of 50 billion Syrian pounds had been allocated to the Reconstruction Commission this year, in addition to the work of the Supreme Relief Committee, in order to offer humanitarian and relief services to the displaced and the citizens affected by the crisis, in coordination with international and civil organizations. On his part, director of the program's department at the UN Human Settlements Program's main center, Mr. Elion Badian, said Syria is a country of civilization in history and we have to work together to overcome the current situation and realize early recovery through speeding up the rehabilitation of infrastructure and implementing the plans and programs that enhance sustainable development. Iran has renewed its stance calling for a political solution for the crisis in Syria, asserting that the Syrian people are the ones who have the right to decide their own future. During his meeting with Finland's Foreign Minister Arkeiteo Miyoda in Helsinki today, Iranian Assistant Foreign Minister for European and American Affairs Majid Takhat Rawanji expressed his country's concern for the continuation of the Syrian crisis, saying that the only political solution to the crisis is to let the Syrian people decide their own future. Concerning Iran's nuclear program, Rawanji said that Europe and the United States should meet their commitments according to the Geneva Convention, adding that Iran expects the European countries to avoid the stances that hurt the track of nuclear negotiations. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Gennady Gatilov has called upon the United Nations Security Council to hold an emergency meeting to discuss the issue of targeting Armenian citizens in Kesab City. Russian media outlets have quoted Gatilov as saying that an investigation should be open into the case of opening fire by the armed terrorist groups at the Armenians living in the Syrian city of Kesab and that it was urgent to discuss the situation as soon as possible. Head of the Chechen Republic, Ramadan Qadirov, has vehemently denounced the crimes perpetrated in the Syrian city of Kassab. Qadirov said that Jabhat al-Nusras and the Islamic Front's armed men have killed 100 Syrian Armenians, pointing out that those terrorists are backed by the West that supplies them with arms in return for implementing the orders given to them to weaken Syria. Finally, the Lebanese army started early today implementing a security plan adopted by the Lebanese government to control the security situation in Tripoli City and to put an end to the armed attacks launched by the pro 14th of March figures and who have been carrying out the dictates of foreign forces. Army units have been deployed along Al Bakar, Al Riva, Al Munqabain, Al Sharani, Bab Tabana and Jabal Mohsen areas backed by elements of the internal forces of security. Checkpoints were fixed in different parts of the city. With this, we come to the end of our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syrianline.sy. Stay with us, the latest in the world of economy, after the break.